What's going on, everybody? It is March 15th, 2024. Day log episode of our NQ and live stream review. So if you guys were in attendance today, you guys got to see me take two losses. And what sucks about live streaming is I was off stream and I took one final trade for the day. My rule is three trades in a day. And it's not me revenge trading. It's especially even for your own real set. If you believe that your draw on liquidity is still correct, the idea is still intact. Everything is still there. You may have a mismanaged the, the stop loss, mismanaged the position, or you're simply taken out and price is still moving in the overall direction. It's not revenge trading. I really want to make that clear. It's you utilizing logic. And I know it can get a little hairy sometimes with our emotions. And that's the reason why I don't encourage placing multiple trades or going back into the market, especially if you're newer. But I know with myself, I trust myself and my judgment that if my idea was still valid and I could see that I kind of just mismanaged something or if I was just stopped out and if price was still moving in the direction, I can go back into the market. So I was able to make back majority of the position from today that I lost on stream. And it just sucks because overall, I mean, I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody, but in a sense, I, I do want to show you all that these concepts do work. And it it's upsetting that there's so many people out there that criticize so much. And I know I'm not trying to give attention to it. I'm really not. Um, but overall, today was a bit hectic overall. I mean, price, the delivery of it, this whole week has not been phenomenal, right? And it's been why I'm encouraged to keep your risk low, keep your engagement low. I mean, so far on stream, I'm engaged twice. So that should give you something, some type of encouragement that if you're having a tough week, I mean, even myself and in times like these, it's where you need to dial everything back and even cut the week off early if you need to, because your mental capital and your capital is being spent very, very quickly. And you don't want to give it up all in a week, like, you know, this week when, you know, who knows the next week and the following week could be really nice. And then all your mental capital and your capital is spent and you, you can't really spend it. So that's the reason why this whole week I've been very, very cautious of price. Um, to be honest with you, I'm very, very excited uh, for tomorrow. I, I can't wait to be done publicly, to be truthfully honest with you all. I mean, this is the last and finally day log publicly that I'm going to do. I'm not going to be doing one tomorrow. So this is it. This is the last final day log that I will be doing for probably 2023 and probably forever publicly, to be honest with you all. So I have appreciated each and every one of you who have supported me, who have commented. Um, please leave your comments below if I've ever helped you, if I've encouraged you, if I've made your progress a little bit better. Uh, I would really genuinely appreciate it because it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of effort to put these day logs up in these videos and live streams and everything else. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. So I hope that all of you end up being inside of the, the group. I Besides money, I, I just generally enjoy interacting with other people and helping others. And I hope you've seen that I'm here to help people. I'm generally here to help people over money. Obviously, money is a somewhat driving motivator of it. But overall, to help each and every one of you, especially those who may not be as fortunate, you know, may not have the money for it, at least, you know, I've given you free content. I've given you enough. ICT's given enough to where you can become successful. But if you really want to dig into my, really, my mindset and the way I trade and the way I do things, you want to stick with me, I mean, the private group will be there. All the details will be released tomorrow. <clears throat> so um, that's really going to be that for that statement. So let's dig into today. The weekly time frame, there's not much to talk about. I mean, it's the reason why I haven't mentioned it too much throughout the live streams or even day logs because it just hasn't moved too much. There's not enough information for me to really work with. We're still residing inside of the previous week low and the previous week high. So we haven't gravitated towards either of them. And it's been hard to put on a weekly profile where in a good week, you can have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever it is, high or low of the week set, and they can go with that bias. But so far, it's been really hard to see where the high or low is set. And when I'm looking at it, it looks like to me yesterday, Wednesday was the high of the week. Um, if I had to you know, go into the head, bias and narrative, I'm going to be looking for the south side still. I mean, I haven't given that up all week. I have not folded on that idea. I've continuously every day have said, I want to see the South side ran into today was the day where I thought we could get into that because we had a news event driver and that just really didn't induce a lot of volatility in the market. As I was anticipating, I wanted to see it free up a little bit more. And that's the reason why I was willing 
to kind of push shorts today because I thought we could at least reach down on the sell side, but it was really, really reluctant to to kind of push lower in here. I think if it doesn't do it tomorrow, next week, and whether that's Monday or Tuesday, we'll, we'll slide into that sell side. It's it's so much accumulated engineered sell side in here. Uh, I would not be surprised tomorrow if we dig into that. So we'll see what happens. Four-hour time frame in here. Again, look at all the sell side being engineered. I would not feel safe putting my stop loss down here with the concepts and the, the way we trade. Um, inefficiency that is residing down here and the one beneath it. So we have two. If we reach underneath the discount or the sell side, we have two discount inefficiencies for price to reach into. <clears throat> Overnight, came up into the SIBI, sold off. Looking at the one hour, I took this away, but this up close candle, as I mentioned yesterday, was the bullish breaker. And we we're kind of just dancing around on that. We closed underneath it, but the delivery this whole week has been really off, meaning the runs in price, the way price has been moving to one side or the other has been really difficult to be in a position. I mean, you saw that today. It's been really difficult to manage a position, whether you have a bias to correct. Um, I called the levels even on Twitter and live streams where price should likely gravitate towards, but the delivery of it was quite awful. I mean, if you were trying to hold on to that, I mean, it would have been difficult to do so. If we go over today's session, <clears throat> In its entirety, I mean, I closed out, I don't want to say prematurely. I mean, it was about a handle away from stopping me out. So it's one of those where it's just, I mean, it probably is going to happen one in 99 times that that's going to happen to me where I close out prematurely at less than a handle by being stopped out. But I mean, it is part of the rules where you shouldn't touch your stop loss in general. And I did. And price ended up moving in the overall direction I was looking for. It would have been difficult to sit through this entire chop. I mean, the delivery of it was awful. It took hours to deliver from my entry point, which was, I don't know, probably about 1030 Eastern Standard Time, right in the middle of Silver Bullet. I mean, from there, it took 1030 all the way till into the portions of the PM session. So that would have been a difficult to trade, you know, a trade to hold on to and manage and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It would have been very difficult. You can see the back and forth in here. Um, I was looking for overall today, which was the south side here, which we eventually ran. The south side, which is residing underneath the low here, and I wanted to see that south side liquidity pull tagged. So it's a really good example. I posted on Twitter as well, is where being right and wrong. This is a great example of why I don't put a lot of emphasis on it, especially with calling draws on liquidity. I don't boast about it because I think it's it's pretty easy to call a draw on liquidity. And especially as I move away from public, just kind of put your head on a swivel for those who are constantly calling draws and liquidity, but you don't see entries. And I'm not saying that's, you know, it's not commendable, but it, there is a, there is a difference, right? Like calling a draw and liquidity is great, but if you're not able to get in a position, manage it, then it really doesn't mean anything because I can call the draws and liquidity, but being able to participate is something different. Um, if we dig into the five minute time frame. I was discussing today how I was sitting on one side. I was electing to wait for one side, which was looking for shorts, and I was waiting for this premium to be met. And in here, if I kind of reel it back between all this mess, I mean, it is disgusting, the delivery of today. In here, when we're residing in here, a lot of people were either trying to go long or they're trying to go short. And I was kind of just waiting for price to deliver and show me what it was trying to do because I was fairly uncertain with the way price was delivering what price really wanted to do because I was also keying off the idea there was some buy side above here so I was kind of utilizing one of the models or instruments things that I've kind of learned over the years is if I'm uncertain on my model especially something like this where it's a continuation model where I'm just shorting in a premium inside of a fair value gap so from this high down to this low this is optimal trade entry equilibrium is sitting here so anything beneath that's discount Anything above that's premium. So we want to be selling in a premium. And if I'm unsure, if I'm just looking at price and everything else, everything, you know, other indexes, dollar index, other things, I want to see from here, I can short up here. But A, my stop loss might be a little bit too wide, so I can wait for price to drop lower. I can refine it on a one minute just like I did today. And ultimately, I was, you know, stopped out. But in a good environment, that, that model will play out perfectly. It will, it will be beautiful. 
And if you're wondering, is the algorithm broken? Is, is something broken? No. Price is just being held on the daily time frame, and it's making conditions tough. And even ICT stated today, these are extremely, in our side of our private group, he said these conditions are extremely difficult, even for himself. So I don't beat myself up so much, even when our own mentor is not having the, the best of time. And he, he still profited today. He was able to get off shorts before the open. So props to him. I mean, that's something that I may have to look at and see how I can utilize that in times where price is consolidating a lot throughout the week. A lot of the opening moves were really nice, and then you move into silver bullet, and it was chop. So I may have to study that over the weekend with you guys and be like, all right, well, that may be a model or a condition that I can adjust to. Again, we can always adjust and learn from things. It's the number one thing throughout losses and throughout pain is you be able to go in your journal, learn from it, adjust, see what you can pull out of that situation, and next time it comes around, be like, all right, cool, what can I do better? And instead of beating yourself up, I'm so stupid, I'm an idiot, blah, 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 that does nothing for you. Why, why don't you just self-analyze and see what you can do better? That's the best case scenario, regardless of how much you lost or how much you feel like a failure. It doesn't do any good to beat yourself up. So if we go into a one-minute time frame, I was observing the one-minute SIBI here, this premium, and obviously the five-minute and the 15-minute. I don't have it on the screen, but if you're live there on, on, on stream, this is what I was waiting for. I was waiting for a just a confirmation that price wanted to move away from that premium SIBI, and I would elect to believe in a very good condition. This is where some people may not believe me, but if you've been around long enough and you understand these concepts, you understand how they deliver, especially in a good low resistance liquidity run signature type of day. This model that I executed on would have worked out beautifully. It would have been very easy. I would have not have had the stop that I would have had because ultimately it delivered to the target. But the way price is delivering is making it difficult to manage positions and be inside of it. It's high resistance. It's going to do that. So there's nothing that I can really do besides just manage my risk and my frequency in these conditions. That's the only thing I can control. So once we collapsed underneath this, I was highlighting how this was becoming an inversion. And I wanted to see us tag the sell side here. So once we formed this little SIBI, I was contemplating on entering on this. And once I saw the rejection away from it, I was like, okay, well, to me, that's really confirming because we're moving away from, again, I know it's not a one minute, but we're moving away from this dealing range high down to this low. We're moving away from that premium inside of the five minute parent for Valley Gap and inside of the 15 minute. So what that is confirming to me is, okay, now it's moving away from that parent inefficiency. It's moving away from that on lower time frames. It's breaking bullish PD rates. So now the one minute is getting into sync with it and it's forming bearish inefficiencies and it's respecting them. So now it's like, okay, it's really good. That's really what I want to see. So even though I lost today, even though the delivery wasn't beautiful, it's not exactly what I you know, panned it out to be. Take this into a consideration when you move into a higher probability state, because this will 100% work. Something like this where I entered, this would have would have played out in a lower resistance liquidity type of day. Something like this would have panned out where you just drop off into the sell side. You wouldn't have had this meandering around, waiting a bunch of time, doing a bunch of nonsense, aimlessly trading. It would have been a nice, clean delivery into the sell side, and it would be easy. And the only way you can really predict that it's going to be high resistance is, again, you're looking at the daily time frame, you're looking at the weekly, seeing the profile. We're inside of consolidation. So it's kind of something, I guess, I can't really predict if we're going to move into that before my entry. Everything else before that was quite clean. It was quite low resistance. And then once I entered in the market, it just meandered around and did nothing. So I entered in here on that inversion. And from there, it was just stalling. It was doing nothing. And I had a belief that we we're going to continuously drop lower because dollar index was screaming higher. Dollar index is a inverse correlation to this. So with that in confluence, I'm holding off on the idea. Yeah, my trade idea is still valid. My stop loss was going above this high because when you look at a 15-minute and a 5-minute, the 15-minute, if you go out to the 15-minute here, this is the SIBI there. And we've already rejected it and moved away from it. So I want to put my stop loss above here because that's the parent. Even the five minute, that's the parent dealing range high. Again, in a very low resistance liquidity run type of signature day, it would have moved. Yeah, some people are going to believe this or not. It would have moved away from that entry point without a doubt in my mind. I've seen it happen plenty of times. This exact model I've executed on plenty of times. It's worked. So I can't anticipate that price is going to reverse and move all the way up to that high there. And this is where I ultimately, I guess, prematurely exited my position. 
because there's a SIBI right here. And my stop loss was here, right? So my stop loss was there. And I was seeing how, A, I didn't exit out of the position early here. I watched it drop lower. So from there, I've already spent enough time. I've already taken some heat. I've spent a lot of time taking some heat. Price drew up into that once, plus this reclaimed, sold off. And then we drive up into it again. And this is right at this point where I, I just took out, um, actually it was at this position where price was basically nearing my stop loss. It was basically about a handle or so, maybe two on IQ. Okay, four, but you get the point. It was very close to my stop loss. So at that point in time, I've already been in the position for a long period of time. Price is no longer really wanting to drop lower. It's creating buy side in here. So at that point in time, I'm basically in my head saying, well, this is probably a canned idea. Did I make a mistake? Should I have left my stop loss there? I mean, I, yes and no. These type of conditions, I mean, it's hard to say. Um, I can give myself self-criticism and say, yes, I probably should have not have touched it. But I'm really not going to beat myself up too much over it because the delivery is awful. Um, I mean, even here when I'm looking at this SIBI, this is the reason probably why I closed out of it because we closed above it here. But I wasn't really looking at the reclaimed. And again, we're creating engineering buy side. So it makes me weary of even like when we start dropping off. Is it just going to run back up and take out my stop loss? I, and people were saying to go break even. I mean, it wasn't even at a break even point to go break even or even take a partial. If, if anything, if it dug underneath the south side, dropped a little bit lower, and I didn't take a partial, then that would have been a mistake. But ultimately, we dropped off lower. And this is where I was annotating how, okay, well, maybe I just prematurely exit out of the trade and the idea is still correct. Because overall, I'm still looking for lower prices. So this is where I was willing to re-enter in the market. I entered it on the SIBI here because there's sell side resting in here, plus this inefficiency. Price is now moving back into correlation to what I was originally thinking. And if you look here, there was a bearish breaker. So <clears throat> this is really what I was ultimately looking for. And... You see price sold off and then just started meandering around for a while. Ultimately, we came back up and the delivery even into the breaker was awful. And my stop loss is above the fair value gap. Should have been above the breaker. I know on the screen I had it on, but on the live account, I didn't. So overall, in high resistance liquidity run signature type of days, it's very difficult. It is very difficult to manage a position, to be inside of a position, to have faith in a position because it's constantly running sell stops, reversing, running sell stops, reversing, spending a whole bunch of time inside a PD race. And it, it's very difficult to have faith and trust in it. And this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is not just the first time it's going to happen to any of you or even me. It's not the first time. It's going to happen over and over to all of us. So, I mean, the only thing I can control is my risk and my frequency. So the trade that I took off stream, I will showcase that. <clears throat> and this one was even a bit, difficult to manage as well. And I was understanding that we are in just really high resistance liquidity run. So there was a SIBI here, and this is where I sold short. My stop loss was going above this high because I was willing to take on that risk because I was looking for the sell side down here and even in here. So that is a at least a one to two, one to three overall. And there was a five minute SIBI here. I was resting there. And even when I was in this trade off stream, I was like, damn, I'm probably going to get stopped out again. And I just held on to the position. I said, you know what? I took out prematurely again. I'm just going to hold on to the position. And that's basically, I just took that lesson and I just moved on to the next you know, trade. So if you look to your left, this is a reclaim for value gap there. And I, in high resistance, could run type of signature days? You have to reach out to a lot of reclaimed inefficiencies and PD rates because they're constantly referring back to them. I mean, the delivery is, is pretty awful, you can see, but it's constantly just keying off of PD rays over and over again. Mean threshold of bearish order block there. Up close candle is here is your bearish order block. This is your reclaimed fair value gap. We drop off. So I was selling short in here. So you had the five minute and the one minute. And this took a whole bunch of time. Even when I was in the position, I took a bunch of heat and the price sold off. And I was taking out partials underneath the sell side here. And as we moved into basically down on the sell side, I took off. I only had two contracts left. So when I was down here, 
I was taking out partials because I understood this day is, is really, really difficult. And at this point in time, I was watching how ES and YM both took out their lows. So there's bullish SMT. And I'm very happy I did what I did because A, I was just protecting myself from the losses that I already took from the day. I wasn't trying to be a superstar and trying to go for all the way down here without taking out partials. Especially when you've taken a loss, you want to be able to just, I hate saying this, just make back at least somewhat of what you lost. And it's not the mentality you should be having, but when you're just looking at in terms of risk reward and looking at your risk management and plan, you should be aiming to make back at least half of your position or 75, 100% of your position. If you can do so logically without emotions involved, then that's the correct decision to make. So even in here, this is where I saw a SIBI and I was like, all right, well, from here, it's got to sell off. And we immediately moved above it. And at that point in time, I'm going, yeah, this type of day, this type of profile is extremely difficult. And we just meandered around and ultimately had this outright reversal out of here. All the way back up, taking out buy side, left this buy side here. So all these things is when that happened, I was immediately moved away from the charts because obviously today's not the best delivery. I've been incorrect two times. At least I got half of, or more of my position back. And at that point in time, it's just kind of indicating me, you know what? I, I don't really know what's going on in here. Ultimately, I was still looking for the sell side, but this is where calling draws on liquidity is easy to me, but managing position is something different because there's no way I would have been shorting in here at that point in time. If I was even in the markets, I probably would have been looking for the buy side. I would have got that wrong. So price sold off into the sell side ultimately to the levels I was looking at. But again, and high resistance liquidity run, liquidity run type of signatures days like this, it's difficult for any strategy. I don't really care what anybody else says. Um, whether you're trading ICT, whether you're trading you know, bull patterns, trend line patterns, I mean, this is a difficult type of day for any trader out there. And the only thing you can really do, again, is control your frequency and your risk because I can't control this. I In days like this, I mean, that it's beyond me. It's beyond my skill set. There's nothing I can really do or learn that would make me profitable in those conditions. If you have a different opinion, you think you can, I mean, that's awesome, but uh, that's not where I'm, what I'm going to teach or advocate for. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's really going to be it for the video. I, I don't want to go on too much longer. I know this is the last video that I'm going to be doing publicly. So, I really appreciate everybody in here, man. It's been fun. I've enjoyed everybody who's commented, who's liked, who's subscribed, who's learned. Um, again, if you can, just comment below if I've helped you in some way, shape, or form, whether it's little, whether it's big. I'd appreciate kind of the, the feedback from it. Um, tomorrow, I'll be doing my final and last public live stream, and I will be doing all the details for the private group at the end of the live stream. That way, everybody can get into it, and then we can start fresh and clean, and I can finally relax, to be honest with you all. I am very, very ecstatic to be moving into a private setting. I'll probably be moving and talking a lot differently than I usually do in a more calm, easier manner because I don't have to deal with trolls and people that criticize. Again, I'm human. If you know, if you see me acting out in a certain way, I apologize. I'm only human. I do my best to obviously not give attention to these people, but it is difficult at times, and I can't wait to be moving away from it, to be honest with you all. So. Until next time, until whenever I talk to you all again, good luck and good trading, everybody. Be safe.